Through the concrete cracks worn weary by work boots and high heels. Through the concrete cracks showered in tears of sorrow, tears of joy. Through the concrete cracks rumbled by reverberations of a hundred years. A flower on the hill takes its first breath and a grand hope springs. Welcome to the Spring Street Podcast at the intersection of creation and destruction in the heart of downtown Los Angeles. And now, a word from the sponsors. This podcast is sponsored by Starship Kairos, a podcast studio available for bookings in downtown Los Angeles. Starship Kairos is where my guests and I make this show happen. Soundproofed, cozy, and equipped with professional audio gear, Starship Kairos is an ideal location for any type of podcast. Starship Kairos offers a full suite of services including content consultation, mixing and mastering, and custom jingle writing. For rates and booking, check them out on Instagram at Starship Kairos or click on the link in the description. And now, let's dive in. We're live here on the Spring Street Podcast. Good What's deal. up, Katie? <laughs> <laughs> Not much. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here on such short notice. So, I love Cliffs of Id for so many reasons, but a huge reason is that um, the people that I meet there are, it's like, it's such a diverse and interesting community, mm-hmm. and a lot of interviews that I've done, a lot of podcasts that I've done have been people that I've met at Cliffs of Id. Oh, Sometimes, yeah. Just like quick turnarounds, just like this. Mm -hmm. So for context, we were literally in the gym yesterday and you were telling me that you're about to go on this crazy adventure. And I was like, "Yep, (laughs) we got to do a podcast before you go. So what is that adventure, Katie? Yeah, so I'm going to be spending about two and a half months in my car. Um, I'm going to be driving uh all the way to salt lake and then to lander for the climbers festival and then so up sick. to canada so from la it's going to be quite a long drive i think i i mapped it just yesterday and it was going to be like 42 hours to get all the way to banff and then 42 hours back down so that's like the halfway point for me wow um yeah so i'm just going to be climbing along the way i'm going to be taking a wilderness first responder course in Kanab next week um, That's cool. Where's Kanab? Yeah. It's in Utah, like south, like okay. south central Utah. It's kind of in the middle of nowhere. Um, south central Utah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, but it's beautiful. There's like a bunch of sandstone cliffs and mm. um, and yeah, the wilderness first responder. It's like a five day course about basically like rescue and uh, that's emergency super cool. Stuff. How did you find out about that course? Well, yeah. So I actually had a friend uh, who just about died a couple of months ago uh, in yeah. J Tree. Yeah, we were on a climbing trip, and then she and a couple of other people decided to go mountain biking. And um, she flew over handlebars and almost bled to death. Her uh, brake handle went into her thigh and Holy shit. punctured the femoral ba- vein. Yeah. So, oh my god. Uh, so that really spooked me because I was like, you know, she was really out there. She had to be helicoptered yeah. out. The whole thing. So. Did- uh, did you guys, were you like one of those I was responders? not there. No, I was not there. My okay. friend knew how to tie a tourniquet though. And so Thank he like God. basically saved her life. And so I realized after that, that I didn't know how to do that. And, yeah. um, and so I wanted to learn. And so I started looking into it. And I also realized that to take the, I'm like kind of pursuing a little bit of light rock guiding. And, okay. Uh, yeah, I'm doing, I like, I just took the single pitch instructor course. So that's like my nice. first step. But next year I'd like to take the rock guide basic. And to do that, one of the prereqs is to take this uh, wilderness first responder. We call it like the woofer. Um, yeah. And <laughs> yeah, so so it's like it kills two birds with one stone, basically. Like I learned from my own personal knowledge how to be safe and how to take care of my partners. But then mm. also um, if I decide to go for a rock eye basic, I'll be prepared. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, I guess that kind of makes sense in light of that experience. Yeah. Um, but that's cool. I think we probably need more people like that out there who have those skills. <laughs> yeah. Even skills just as basic as like tiny tourniquet. Yeah, for sure. I, uh, yeah, I realized that it would have been really scary if I were there and didn't know what to do because they didn't have service either. So that was uh, another. Nice. Yeah, I also got the Garmin InReach now. So Ooh, what uh, is that? it's like a SOS button that you can just press. You, you have to subscribe. Okay. You buy their device, you subscribe to yeah. their service. And then um, so basically. We're all over the world. Pretty much, yeah. There's wow. like satellites everywhere, and uh, yeah, you can pretty much just press it wherever you are. Dang, that's uh, that's probably pretty handy to have, you know, going out on the road. Yeah. So you're gonna be 
you're gonna be living in your car. I'm gonna be living in the car. It's a little <laughs> bit of like a foray kind of yeah. into the van life, so to speak. It's van life light. Yeah, it's the CRV <laughs> life, you know. CRV life. Yeah. So it's gonna be interesting. I I tried to build out the back of it. Mm. Um, I previously like I would go on climbing trips and I was always sleeping in the back of my car, but I was. Yeah sleeping in the most uncomfortable way. So I have <laughs> I have a 2011 CRV and I uh, the seats don't fold flat in that. Oh wow. So yeah, so I was um basically like propping my crash pad up so that it was even with the the uneven seats. Yeah. <laughs> and then like sleeping on that surface and it was very uncomfortable and uh <laughs> Yeah, wow. it enter- entertained my friends. But anyway, now I have like a, a plywood sleeping, you know, area. And yep. then I have like a, a section for my kitchen as well. That's perfect. So, What's yeah. your kitchen set of like? <laughs> my kitchen setup is extremely light. Um, <laughs> so I have a I have a camp stove, like a butane camp stove. Yeah. And then I have um, a cooler. And that is pretty much it. <laughs> Sick. Honestly, yeah. the camp stoves are where it's at. Yeah. I have, a, I think it's called a camp chef. I got off Amazon okay. at some point. And it's like a stove and an oven. It's run off propane, mm-hmm. and I cook on that thing twice a day. Like nice. that thing is a beast, yeah. and propane also lasts a really long time. Okay, I rarely ever have to fill up. It's like a tiny tank too. It's like mm-hmm. a one gallon tank. Oh, nice! I fill okay. it up once every few months, and it's probably like five bucks to fill up. Oh, that's awesome! Yeah, I have the same. It's like a Eureka, like one single burner kind of thing yeah. that I have right now, and it's. I mean, it's fine. It's perfectly adequate yeah it fulfills what i need it to do, do you got so. some uh some meal ideas already oh god uh, <laughs> um honestly to be honest with you my favorite meal is a sandwich and so easy then that's pretty easy to make. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of sandwich <laughs> i'm a vegetarian so just veggie veggie sandwich veggie sandwich yeah. some tomatoes the spinach some... yeah all the good stuff <laughs> some cucumbers yeah pickles pickles, pickles yeah. all the way that counts as cucumbers True. Yeah. yeah, fair enough. Even yeah. though I feel like there's a big difference between like a cuc- <laughs> you know those like dainty yeah. little cucumber sandwiches you eat at oh, like for a sure, yeah. really fancy party <laughs> <laughs> with like the crust cut off. Yeah. I love those. Um you were telling me that you were also you were working on your build out mm-hmm. yesterday or two days ago. Mm-hmm. Like every day. Oh my God. Every it's day. not done. It's, um, yeah, it's, I don't think it's ever going to be done. I think by the time I finish this road trip, I'll have a whole new idea of what I need to do and it'll change completely. Oh, but, but yeah, I've been dabbling with the carpentry. That's sick. Had you ever done anything before with like power tools or building or anything like that? Um, it might not look like it, but my dad, my dad kind of built a uh, climbing wall for me when, I, I mean, Yo. he let me help, but he kind of mostly did it. So I had like uh, back during the pandemic, uh, That's back in Virginia, he, he did that. Yeah. But, um, so I kind of had like an idea of how to like, v- like a vague idea of how to use things. Although yeah. like I didn't really use them myself much sure. um, at that time. So I kind of, yeah. I'd, I'd seen them used. Yeah. Does that count for something? I think it does. Honestly, like <laughs> yeah. I grew up around, like my, my dad did like a, a lot of different kind of jobs around the house. And we also like, we, we like, we built a house growing up, like not my, you guys built it? Not my parents, like, physically, but they, they had, like, contractors, and, like, okay. they were kind of really involved, and so mm-hmm. my dad would always take us to the construction site, and we would, like, see it being built, mm-hmm. and That's he would, cool. like, walk us through construction sites. Mm-hmm. So I think before I ever even picked up a power tool, there were, like, a lot of just things that I was... I think it, it yeah. does count for something, just, like, being exposed for to, sure. to that. Yeah. But what I love about your story, and because I feel like it's part of a broader narrative of, like, young people who are taking up these projects that are you know like getting into carpentry Mm -hmm. and just jumping right in like just building stuff Mm -hmm. rigging out vans um like that's kind of part of the whole ethos i feel like because a lot of people like obviously there's van builders and stuff van builders yeah it's Um, kind of expensive super expensive i would say like in my, it seems like most people are actually doing their own builds, mm, yeah, or at least trying it, or they're like doing it with the help of somebody else. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's just like such a cool component of that community. Yeah, definitely. I, uh, I think like there aren't there are a lot of van builders, but there aren't a lot of um, back of your CRV builders <laughs> that you can find <laughs> on Google. So I was kind of. Yeah, and for me also, it, it just needed to be temporary. You know, it for doesn't sure. have to last forever. Yeah. So, had you been thinking about like going on some kind of an extended trip or living in your car? Like, had you been thinking about this for a while? Yeah, constantly. I mean, so 
some background. I uh, I did consulting for about five years when I was living in D.C. after mm. after undergrad, and I um I had taken a year off. I'd taken a leave of absence for a year to go travel, and uh, that was really bad timing. February first, twenty twenty, is the day I left. No. Yeah. So I you know, and I got like I, I was gonna do like the banana pancake trail like around Southeast Asia, yeah. and um for like the first part of it and I got part of the way in and I was in um, my yoga teacher training in Rishikesh, India when I mm. had to evacuate. Like they had canceled all the visas. They, I wow. was like at the second to last day of commercial flights coming back and Damn. so at that time I was like, I had the bug, the travel bug obviously at mm. that time and then, um, you know, didn't get to finish the trip. I got like seven weeks in or something yeah. and had to leave. So uh, then, you know, went to grad school and did this, you know, product manager work at Aspiration for a while and they had this massive layoff and so I was like well it's time for me to do something you know yeah. it's, it's kind of like revisit that um although it's a little different of a trip than I had planned I, it's definitely mm. something that has been on, on the back of my mind for quite some time yeah so. have you ever been to Banff before no <laughs> oh my god no you're gonna love it I'm so excited Banff is one of my favorite places in the world it is so beautiful yeah. Um, I haven't been there in a few years, but the last time I was there was Canada Day. Well, I don't so, know. What is Canada Day? Is that like Independence Day? For, okay. Yeah, it's July 1st. Okay. <laughs> you know, okay. they're trying to, trying to keep it close to July 4th. Um, and, you know, it's like literally the same thing. It's just a Canadian flag and fireworks okay. and bands and all that stuff. But it's like, ener it's like yeah. same energy as like 4th of July. Yeah. But up in Banff, it was just so much fun, so beautiful. That's awesome. Everyone was there. I played a, a little house show because I was on tour at the time. That's um, awesome. But the, like the mountains are just absolutely stunning. That drive is stunning. Are you going to be going to Banff through Montana or are you going to be going through BC? Um, yeah, so, well, both. I, uh, I'm going to go, well, I'm going to go to Banff through Montana and then leave Banff through uh bc okay yeah so i'll get yeah. to see both <laughs> yeah that drive to bc is is crazy really yeah you're like driving alongside just massive massive mountains that are like yeah. so humbling you just feel like the tiniest thing in the world driving <laughs> along them it's oh my god i love that i'm excited for like the feeling of awe i'm hoping to come back like completely transformed from this time outside I'm, yeah you might come back yeah. wanting to move to bc <laughs> I, that's already on my on my want list so yeah. maybe i'm curious about how you got into climbing and your climbing story oh yeah so when i lived in dc i was living downtown and i um and i was doing i was doing parkour at this um parkour <laughs> yeah this parkour gym um no way it was like the maybe like one of the only parkour gyms probably because it's like such a you know uh, unique and non-conforming activity that most people don't really do it in a gym <laughs> most people kind of do it outside yeah yeah. and um so i had this i had uh, you know i lived very close to this old firehouse where they had this gym and i was um they were kind of you know i i took like classes there i took like a, bo a boot camp there learned how to yeah. do it and, like made made a solid core group of friends there yeah and then at some point i was kind of like getting tired of parkour the gym was kind of like not doing super well and i started looking for other things and that's mm. when i found both yoga and climbing and wow. um that's yeah. crazy that parkour came before those things <laughs> parkour is, is pretty fun honestly but, yeah that's awesome yeah. Yeah. Were so, you ever uh, like jumping from like rooftop to rooftop? Or, no, like, no, no, no. I, I like stayed low to the ground, honestly. Yeah. But so, so the heights thing definitely was new when I started mm. climbing. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I had always climbed trees and stuff growing up. I grew up in like the coastal flatlands of Virginia, so okay. it was definitely not, uh, definitely not a lot of rocks to climb. But, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I found things to climb. Um, and then, yeah, and then I started climbing and I was like immediately addicted. It was like, uh, there was nothing else. I didn't want to do parkour. I didn't want to do anything else. I just wanted to climb. And yeah. so I was climbing in the gym a lot back East. Um, and yeah, that was mainly because I didn't have a car. Um, mm -hmm. I was living in DC without a car cause you know, you can do that there, not here in LA, but, yeah. um, yeah. So then when I moved out here for grad school, I was like, I mean, California is where you want to be for rock climbing, right? Like mm -hmm. there's so much, it's world-class. And I just started climbing outside 
pretty much every weekend. And, um, you know, now that I'm laid off, I'm looking for <laughs> new employment. I'm also like climbing during the week. Yeah. Outside most days. So wow. that's kind of my path. Yeah. What are your like hotspots? Where do you like to go mostly? Oh, man, I love the Eastern Sierra. That is definitely my top favorite place to go. Um, I don't think I know where that is. <clears throat> yeah. So Bishop, California. Do you know where Mammoth is? I still haven't been to Bishop. Oh my gosh. We were talking about this yesterday. I got to go to Bishop. You got to go to Bishop. It's the promised land. Okay. So there's, there's the buttermilks. Uh, that's probably my favorite. Um, Mm. because the rock it's quartz monzonite. So it's really sharp and it's just like, you're kind of trusting little crystals with, uh, for footholds and for, you know, you're like (laughs) pinching tiny crystals. Oh my goodness. And it's, yeah, like when you first go there, you first arrive in the buttermilks, it's you see like they call it grandma and grandpa Peabody. And it's like these two giant 50 foot tall boulders. They look like they wow. just got split apart, uh, you know, millions of years ago or whatever, how long. And yeah. uh, and then you have Mount Tom and, and Wheeler Crest in the background. And, you know, it's it's just beautiful. Mm. Um, and so you kind of like you come into the buttermilks and it's like you're filled with awe. And mm. then you realize every boulder, even the really easy ones, is high. It's a highball mostly. Um, wow. So it's kind of an intimidating place to boulder. But that is I love bouldering there. Yeah. Um, like and how high yeah. are we talking? Um, I mean, like the grandma and grandpa are 50 feet tall. They're like well-known ultra classic Jeez. highball boulders. I have not climbed either of those yet. Yeah. Um, but yeah, even the other boulders, I people mean, people will you're just talking. free climb that with like a crash pad below. Yeah, they will. Yeah. Oh my God. Mm-hmm. Yeah. People get hurt every year, but um, <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. And then there's, uh, there's great sport climbing in Owens River Gorge. Um, and of course there's like great alpine climbing as well. So damn. Yeah. These are places I still have not been to. I've only been to, yeah. uh, I've been to Point Doom, okay, Malibu Creek, okay, and then J Tree, and I think. Well, J Tree is pretty nice too. Yeah, J Tree. I do love J Tree. I, I love J Tree. Yeah, um, but those are it. I still haven't been to Stony Point. I was supposed to go <laughs> the other day, um, and then yeah, yeah. still got to get up to Bishop. Yeah, yeah. What kind of climb, what kind of style of climbing do you mostly like to do? Uh, right now, mostly top roping. Okay. Yeah, I still need to get. I've l- done a little bit, like a tiny bit of lead climbing. Okay. And that's the direction I want to head. I'm not as much of a boulderer. Like I love okay. bouldering in the gym. Yeah. But bouldering outside freaks me out for sure. Understandable. Yeah, with bouldering, you're way more likely to, you're way more likely to get injured. Although you're probably not going to die. Um, <laughs> whereas like with roped climbing, you're you Not could, that likely to get injured, but if you do, yeah, you could definitely. It's gonna die. be catastrophic. Yeah. Yeah, I see. I'm not. I I like heights. Okay. And I'm like I'm totally good with heights. Yeah. And as long as I got a rope on me, I'm like I'm chilling. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Send me up, hundred feet, thousand feet. As long as I got a rope, we're doing good. Fair enough. But the yeah. bouldering, I mean, like I'm ten feet off the ground. I'm like, oh shit, I definitely <laughs> do not want to fall, even though there's a pad. Like, right. So, what about you? What's your preference? Yeah, I'm like, uh, I'm kind of a boulder bro and a trad dad. So that's like where I've been thriving <laughs> lately. Um, definitely yeah. both of those. I, I mean, I, of course, I sport climb sometimes, like when mm. I go to Malibu Creek or whatever. But yeah, um, but yeah, those are those are my favorite. I'm a boulder bro at heart, and like more recently, I've been doing a lot more trad climbing. So yeah, what is it about bouldering? that is like particularly compelling for you it's the freedom of the movement honestly like you Mm. you know there is no there's no clipping there's no like gear nonsense super low barrier to entry yeah it's extremely social um it's i found it to be a really supportive culture whereas Mm. like maybe that's not something i want to draw contrast with really with other styles of climbing but (laughs) it's definitely it's definitely a very supportive culture and uh, it's really easy to see what you've done too. You know, you can mm. look at it and people walk up to the base of boulders all the time. And they're like, how do you even start it? And it, so if you do something and somebody walks up to it, they can see exactly what you did. And mm. it's, it's really easy to understand. You're just standing on top of a little boulder and like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's just, uh, yeah, it's fun. And also it's pretty low commitment in terms of like, you know, you can spend an hour and go bouldering, but like, because most of the time there's not a huge approach and it's just a lot more casual. So yeah. it's it's pretty chill. And you just have the freedom of the movement. You're only climbing. Yeah. Yeah. I guess that's fair. There's kind of a lot involved. Like if you're going to go top rope or you like, trad climbing, I mean. Yeah. Just to be safe, you know, all the protocols and like things you kind of want to just like the people mm-hmm. you go with, making sure that they're on the same page, sure. making sure that your gear is like squared away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There is a lot more involved for sure. 
Yeah, and with drag climbing, like you, you definitely want to know who your belayer is, uh, obviously, <laughs> but yeah. also like you need to know how to place the gear. So there's a lot of there's a learning barrier there too that you can't really. I mean, you can bring people track climbing, but you just want to be so far within your comfort zone. Whereas you could mm. bring someone that doesn't really boulder to come out and hang while you're trying something yeah. at your max, you know? So it's like, it feels a little more inclusive in that way to me. Yeah. Have you had yeah. any scary experiences track climbing? Uh, track climbing? I mean, <laughs> I feel like <laughs> part of the beauty of track climbing for me is that every experience <laughs> is almost a scary experience. Because yeah. it's just like, you know, I, I probably was climbing harder before I started really focusing on trad climbing last like last fall mm -hmm. but um i guess it was because i like i i was trying really hard on things that i was super safe on but now that i'm trad climbing i'm like a lot more cautious and so i'm just gonna i'm kind of getting gripped on the easiest you know like five eight in jj or whatever and just yeah. uh it's a different experience you know it's like a head game experience versus for sure necessarily like a physical challenge at this point for me yeah anyway. i mean eventually i hope to get where i'm projecting on on gear but mm. not there yet <laughs> yeah it's definitely crazy to like put in a piece of gear and be like okay this is <laughs> supporting my life yeah but i i actually really want to get into track climbing eventually oh okay yeah well the first thing that's supporting you your life is always your your grip like your hands and your body you know true so very true so like as long as you're super solid like you don't ever really you don't, you don't really have to worry that much right about your placements but uh unless you're building an anchor of course but yeah but yeah. yeah we should go track climbing sometime out of j tree let's, let's do it yeah. i would love to oh my god um it's i don't go to j tree enough yeah i really don't the last time i was there i want to say was in the maybe it was like december or october I, don't know. I mean, it's better yeah. in the fall. Like, yeah. it has been decent lately, though. Like, uh, I was there last weekend, um, just like, you know, on my own, just kind of climbing a bit, and, mm. um, and it was maybe eighty. I want to say, like, it wasn't too hot. So. It was nice. It's pretty honestly. good. Yeah, it's pretty fine. I'm sure it was like yeah. the crazy thing about J Tree, at least in my experience, is it just so. Like, it depends on what side of the sun you're on. Like, what if the sun is blocked by one of the mountains? Oh, for sure, yeah. Then it can be so much colder. Like, yeah. the first day that I was there, we were on, like, a like shadowy side of the mountain, and it was freezing. So mm -hmm. cold. We were doing Isle of Sky. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so cold. So much fun. It was yeah. so cold. And then the next day, we were out climbing at, like, Hidden Valley, mm -hmm. direct sunlight, Hot. and, like, shirts off. <laughs> yeah. Just totally different experience yeah and the wind too at j tree like yeah. the wind will really make or break your experience it can you know make the difference between being able to feel your toes and not being able to feel them <laughs> yeah so, definitely yeah you've done red rocks a bit right too yeah a little bit of red rock yeah here and there yeah that's sick i really want to go out to red rocks oh really yeah, yeah. you should yeah i mean not in the summer like wait a few months but oh yeah um, i'm sure it's like a hundred or like <laughs> more than a hundred right now yeah it's kind of brutal right now i think uh but but yeah it definitely i mean red rock got like a ton of rain this season so it was like kind of hard to find times to go out there because it's mm. sandstone you can't climb on wet sandstone but um but yeah i think you know fall winter spring sometime. Yeah. yeah so on your trip are you meeting up with people along the way to climb and do mm -hmm. these little adventures i am yeah so i i have some other unemployed friends uh and i rough times <laughs> right now Damn. yeah tech tech is kind of brutal at the moment but yeah. yeah so i i'm meeting up with some friends along the way and then i'm going to the climbers festival in lander mm -hmm. and i'm meeting up with a, a group of friends there and then i have um and where's lander lander wyoming um it's, oh cool. yeah it's kind of it's near the the wind river uh range the the wind river reserve um mm. and so so it's like kind of in central it's like in, it's like right in the middle almost mm. of wyoming um yeah so i'm gonna be going there for that and then probably to the tetons i have some friends that are going to be there i'm basically following my friends around if they're going to be in the vicinity and yeah. then and then i am uh i'm going up to 10 sleep i have a friend that's going to be up there what is um, this place called Ten sleep. Ten sleep. Ten sleep. Yeah, I think it's named Ten Sleep because of the number of days like it used to take on horseback. Uh, oh, that's cool. I'm not sure from where to where, but anyway, it's called Ten Sleep because of how to get there. Yeah, sweet <laughs> directions. Um, yeah. So then, when I get to Canada, that is where I I kind of have to find partners. Um, mm -hmm. 
So I don't really – I'm going to be near Banff, and I'd like to do I, – I would really like to try some of the, the easier alpine climbing in the Bugaboos. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll see if I can find a partner that that I can go up with. But yeah. um, if not, I at least want to, like, hike and, like, summit a glaciated peak because I have never done that before. And mm. I just it's just on my list for, for whatever reason. I don't, I don't have, like, a good reason for that goal, but that yeah. is something that's on my radar. Um, and then Squamish, I'm trying to – I'm trying to strong arm some of my friends that live in Seattle to come up because yeah. I'll be there in August. And that's like, you'll definitely meet people yeah. up in Squamish for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Squamish I is incredible. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Squamish and Whistler are like also that drive to the Sea to Sky Highway from Vancouver up there okay. is one of the most beautiful, especially this time of year. Okay. It's stunning. Hmm, all right. Yeah. Because you're driving up the coast and there's like, this massive kind of inlet that you are driving past and all these little islands. And in July and August, it's like hot and sunny and beautiful. Everything's green. You know, it's just, yeah. it's incredible. I'm psyched. I'm so excited about Squamish because like that's one of the storied places that you hear about when you first start climbing. People are like, oh, like, you got to check out like Yosemite, J. Tree, Squamish. Like those are like mm-hmm. the three that I feel like you hear about. Yeah. And yeah, so I'm, I'm pretty psyched to go there. You should do this hike when you're up there called The Chief. Okay. It's not that crazy. Like it's probably like moderate. Mm-hmm. Like it's a decent hike. Okay. But beautiful view of like the whole valley and the river. Like mm-hmm. it's incredible. I think the ch- is it the same formation that people climb? That's also called the Chief. Yeah. Probably is. Yeah. Probably. Okay. Because there's a lot of climbing, like all mm-hmm. mixed in there. Okay. Um, yeah, I played a show up there once upon a time. <laughs> uh, up on the Chief. <laughs> on the top of the what? Chief. Yeah. I mean, I don't know that I can really call it a show. I like. I was playing a lot of house shows at the uh-huh. time, and I was like, I should play. I was like, it would be so cool to play a show on the top of a mountain. Uh-huh. So I made like a little uh-huh. event on Facebook, and I was like, me and this guy, me and my buddy Eric, That's we so were going to cool. go play a show, mm-hmm. and it ended up like nobody decided to come, uh-huh. and we were like, screw it. We'll just Keep climb the mountain it, yeah. with our guitars, and we'll just like play for whoever's on the top of the mountain. <laughs> They were probably psyched. They were probably yeah. They were stoked. <laughs> it was great. So we kind of like we got to the top, played for all the people who were up there. Um, I think it happened along the way that the soles of my boots came off. Oh, I was I had like inherited these boots from my grandfather because oh. he had like just passed away, oh, and like wow. I found these boots in his mm-hmm. garage or whatever. So I was wearing them because they were really cool, mm-hmm. but they were super old, <laughs> and the soles came off. Oh, and so under like. Underneath the soles, it was just kind of like this hard, plasticky kind of surface that was super slick and Ooh. terrible for climbing. So I ended up just taking them off and going barefoot. <laughs> so I was climbing the end of this mountain barefoot. Oh I looked insane, like just long hair. I think I had a beard at the time. I think I had no shirt on and just like cut off shorts and a guitar, like in barefoot. I just looked like a wild man. Certain kind of vibe <laughs> for sure. That's hilarious. It was, uh, yeah. <laughs> I think I got to go back there and uh, do another attack. I think so. Yeah, that sounds awesome. You should get you should get a video of that. Yes, I know. I don't know why we didn't uh, get some good footage of that the first time. So <laughs> that's amazing. Um, but yeah, you're gonna love <clears throat> you're gonna love Squamish. Yeah, I'm curious. Coming from like parkour and going into climbing and yoga, is there anything else that you see in the horizon of? future hobbies or activities or things that you want to do you know i'm pretty locked on the climbing at the moment um yeah yeah, the climbing is really like uh exciting to me so that's keeping me busy i would say at the moment although i did recently start skiing so okay i'm looking to kind of combine those two like getting more into taller mountains um like nothing too extreme but um i think it'd be good to to kind of combine climbing with skiing, you know, climb up, ski down kind of thing. That'd be um, insane. So, yeah. How would that work? Would it be like glacier climbing, like climbing with like an, yeah. like an ice pick or like those? Perhaps. Yeah. Maybe a little ice climbing. Um, I'd sound like a little bit of ice climbing. I've tried it basically and up in Levining and mm. it was pretty fun. I get the appeal for sure. Um, although I don't think I'll like become an ice climber or anything, but, um, yeah. but yeah, I think it'd be cool to just get into summiting bigger mountains and that would involve a little bit climbing a little bit of maybe skiing down uh Mm. that's kind of my dream combo so i have to get to be a competent enough skier 
to do that uh and i'm definitely not there yet i yeah. i'm definitely at the point in the you know the dunning kruger effect where you like start out something and you think you're really good you're getting better <laughs> and then you like and eventually realize that you're actually you kind of suck yeah. uh that's kind of i'm at the part where i've like realized how bad i actually am at skiing like yeah <laughs> <laughs> i had the beginners the beginners experience of like being really proud of myself for the progress and then yeah. now i'm down at the down at the trough somebody so. told me once that with skiing it's it's easy to learn hard to master yeah and with snowboarding, it's hard to learn. Yeah. Easy to master. I have heard that. Controversial opinion, maybe, <laughs> perhaps. I don't know if the snowboarders would like that, but. I have heard that. I have heard that. And I have tried snowboarding. And, you know, in terms of how my first day went, I would say, like, <laughs> I, I would say that's an accurate statement. Like, yeah, you're probably on your ass, like, most of the day. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, snowboarding, I would say the thing with all any snow sport really and maybe any downhill sport is that you're like surrendering to gravity and mm. you know for me like my brain is in the climbing like the climbing zone so mm. i'm like used to fighting gravity i'm like an uphill <laughs> uphill athlete like it's a yeah. it's a slow kind of steady fight against this force that's like pulling me down right mm -hmm. and um and I can kind of stop at any point along the way and evaluate, like, what's my next move? Um, yeah. Whereas with uh, – and that's, like, how I find the flow state. But, like, the thing with skiing downhill is that you're you're surrounding to gravity. You can't necessarily stop on a dime at any given point. You mm -hmm. kind of have to, like, just let it go and, like, trust the mountain, like, trust that it's going to be fine. And yeah. so that – it's definitely – it puts me in a completely different headspace. Um, so that's been the challenge with skiing for sure. But. Yeah. I still want to try skiing. I've never done it before. Wait, you're from Vancouver. I know, but I, I'm a snowboarder. Oh, so all like right. Oh, snowboarding, okay. snowboarder. Yeah, okay. snowboarding has okay. always been my thing. Um, though at this point, I almost feel like I can't even call myself a snowboarder because I haven't been up in like five, six, seven seasons. Like it's. Oh man. Yeah, I know. Gotta it's, get it's, back out. I know. This was know. the season. Mammoth was I like. Know. It's still. I mean, it's still going. You can. You can still get out this season. Is it really? Yeah, they're still open. They're going to be open through next month. Yeah. No way. Mammoth got like so many inches. I don't even know. <laughs> like. That's insane. They're still open though. Yeah. That's. This has been such an odd year. <laughs> yeah. In terms of weather in California. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, but, the flooding, the the rain, everything. It's yeah, just... it's crazy though, because like, on the one hand, there's the flooding, but then at least we don't have the forest fires. True. So Although I did, J yeah. Tree's on fire right now. There's like That's, a thousand acres. I just yeah. heard that. So yeah, I I I guess they didn't get much rain out there though. So mm -hmm. that does kind of make sense. But but yeah, hopefully it protects like this. You know, this fall. Hopefully it keeps us yeah. away from the the fires. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Yeah. Back to your trip. Mm -hmm. What, uh, where do you want, do you have any kind of expectations, any kind of, like, I'm sure there's a lot of thoughts going through your mind about, like, <laughs> living in your car, on the yeah. road, on this trip. <laughs> Are you kind of winging it? Have you done a lot of planning? Have you, like, watched videos? What's, what's your headspace like right now going into it? Yeah, maybe a little bit of both. I, I think I've done, I think I've watched some videos and I've ignored a lot of that. Um, as you, you know, you probably saw my, my sawing video. I ignored <laughs> a lot of like best practices, um, <laughs> I would say, but, um, but yeah, I, so a little bit of both. I, um, I mean, I have some friends that have kind of done similar things with their cars. So I kind of like mm. looked at what they've done and then adapted that to fit my car. Um, and I had, you know, I had like a little setup that was working before I built anything. And so I've learned a little bit from that and kind of iterated on it, um, you know, over the time that I've been sleeping in my car for like climbing trips and stuff like that so this will mm. be definitely the longest sustained period of my car but i have spent a lot of nights like just in my car yeah. um so i'm kind of familiar with it from that but uh i think i think it'll i think what i what i want will change completely by the time i'm by the time i'm done like i think i'll shift it around probably four or five times during the course of the two and a half months that i'm yeah. gonna be on this trip um but yeah i am there are some things I still have to figure out. Um, and one is that I will be by myself for part of this trip, um, which isn't really something I've done a lot of in my car. Mm. Um, so like as a woman by myself, I think, you know, I might want, you know, window coverings, which I don't have now because usually when I go climbing, I'm like, oh, I'm waking up early anyways. Like I, I'm yeah. just sleeping in my car with my friends, like whatever. It's fine. Yeah. So, um, so I got to figure out some like security stuff. I think that's probably one of the things that I need to figure out. Yeah, window coverings would definitely, yeah. definitely help. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> being in a CRV where it's, 
Um, All windows. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My when my brother and I first moved to LA in our first van. Uh huh. Um, we made these like little curtains. Actually, we already had the curtains, I think, from a tour that I did in the van. Okay. But we had these curtains. It was literally just a bungee cord with fabric. Nice. That like would you like go from the front to the back mm -hmm. so that we could block out those windows. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's pretty crucial. Keeping you know making it so that people can't just like, <laughs> look right into your car. Yeah, I had an interesting experience recently where I was sleeping in the parking lot at Talk Eats and um, my friends, like I had a bunch of friends that were up there kind of the same weekend and I had two friends who like I hadn't heard from, but I knew they were fine because it was like they were going to climb an easy route and like mm. I knew they were behind some parties. So I wasn't really that worried about them. So I kind of went to bed and, you know, I just figured like, ah, oh, they're fine, you know. Yeah. Um, and... I was sleeping right next to the trailhead, and and my car is obvious because I have Virginia plates and I'm in California, you know. And yeah. So they came up at midnight and knocked my window. Oh. I thought I was getting murdered. Oh my <laughs> god. Like, yeah, but um, yeah. So I would like to avoid that. <laughs> yeah, that's always a rough experience. I've had the knock. Yeah. Three times. Three oh, times, really? grand total. Okay. It's never fun. No. Yeah. Yeah, at least it was my friends, so... For sure. And that's usually what it is. Yeah. yeah uh, well, actually, maybe I shouldn't say usually. <laughs> maybe usually it's security, actually. <laughs> it's <laughs> yeah, I, got, I think I got lucky that time, but, um, you know, I don't know. It works out. I definitely thought I was getting murdered, though, because they had headlamps on, and so they were... I couldn't see their faces. Like, it was, you know, it was blinding me. Yeah. And I had just wakened, so it was, like, yeah. definitely jarring. But. In terms of parking, are you going to be mostly staying in, like, pretty remote areas, like camping sites and yeah that's kind of the plan so i think my goal is to be mostly on like public land um sleeping sleeping like on blm land or mm -hmm. or in campsites yeah. um although i probably will mix it in with maybe like an airbnb here or there like i have some friends getting an airbnb in lander and mm -hmm. stuff like that so um and i'm visiting a friend in salt lake so yeah. i have like i have like a mix of things but in terms of parking i'm not expecting to park in like an urban environment uh, yeah. and sleep there so. that's that's fair and that probably helps a lot too i yeah. think that makes a, a pretty big difference i think so too <laughs> um you also might want to and you've probably looked into this already but canada can be a little bit weird about oh. that kind of stuff i didn't know that i have not looked into this yet. yeah and when you cross the border uh -huh. you'll probably want to have like some kind of a whether it, like whether it's like a friend's house or like an airbnb or a campsite like some there it'd be better to have something like that be like oh i'm gonna be camping at this campsite okay all right they're definitely gonna want to hear that as you don't want to say that you're sleeping in my car <laughs> you definitely don't want to say that at the border okay that's good to know. A Thank little, you. <laughs> tip. I like since I, I I've crossed that border okay. more times than I can count. Mm -hmm. And what's crazy is like I'm Canadian, mm -hmm. but it is going into Canada like that border is way more intense than coming back into America. Really? Oh yeah. Oh wow. Definitely. Um and I know that like at least in BC they're I think they're sh stricter about okay. like people living in their vans or living in their cars yeah. or like I think it's it's illegal in some places. Oh. In some cities. Oh my. Okay. Well, that's good to know. I uh yeah, I definitely haven't looked into it yet. I I'm like kind of planning things as I go, to be honest. Like yeah. I'm planning like a couple of weeks in advance and then I'm like figuring the rest out, yeah. you know. Um, but honestly, like just as long as you have like like I said, like a campsite. Yeah. Like like oh, I'm camping at this place in Banff. Like once you're across, you know, <laughs> then yeah. like yeah. your plan can be adjusted. Sure. And you can do what, you know, whatever you were intended, you know. Right. Um, hmm. But okay. yeah, just having that like plan. Okay, so, fair enough. So little, <laughs> little tip for you. That Yeah, I appreciate that tip. I, um, yeah, I, I've been to Canada before, but I've never, um, I've never crossed via like the land. Crossing. land. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, it's it's intense for whatever reason. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe I just have a hard time. <laughs> They're like this guy. Maybe their profile. This guy me. looks sketchy. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Even though he's Canadian, I don't know if we want him back. Yeah, I've actually, I've like, I haven't crossed yet in my van. Okay. But I do. I don't know. I just, I have like, so when I go up to Canada in my <laughs> van, which eventually is going to happen. <laughs> It's definitely going to be like, yeah, I'm staying with friends and family. Mm -hmm. Like, not going to mention anything about your van. <laughs> Though I have a feeling. I just know they're going to be like, 
let, let's look in the van. Like, let's. You know, <laughs> Why just, do you have this bed here? <laughs> so, I don't know. Explain that. I'm st- I'm definitely like a little <laughs> bit nervous about that. Yeah. But, um, but you know, it's it's just one of those things that you kind of, at the end of the day, you're going up on this amazing trip. You're going to be climbing and doing like it's not like you're actually doing anything crazy. It's like it's a pretty normal thing. Yeah, so I think you'll so. be fine. Yeah. They should be familiar with that. You know, people crossing into their, to go to the Canadian Rockies. Like, oh, totally. I, mean, I feel totally. Like that, that'll, that'll and be. I think too, like there's, there's definitely a difference in like the border crossings that are like the, the really heavy traffic ones mm-hmm. um, between like Seattle and Vancouver. Yeah. Yeah. I think those ones are more intense. Cause I do remember I crossed from Alberta into Montana or Alberta into North Dakota or something like that. Or maybe it was Idaho, actually. Okay, yeah. And that was one of the most <laughs> low-key border crossings I've ever seen in my life. Like, oh, really? It was just so remote and so rural. Into America? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that one was super Pro chill. Pro tip, everybody. So, <laughs> yeah. If, you're if you want to get into America. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no kidding, right? I, I think it makes a difference. Like, if you're, if you're somewhere just... Yeah, for sure. Super chill. Like, people might be more friendly. Yeah, so hopefully they'll let me in to Alberta then... Uh, I don't know exactly where I'll be crossing in, but I, I think I'll go like through Bozeman and then north from there. Mm-hmm. I think I'll cross in via Montana. So okay, cool. I don't know what that town is, but hopefully they're nice. <laughs> yeah, I still have never actually been to Montana. I mean, I was so what? close, like top of Idaho. But Why not? <laughs> I I'm telling you, these like Montana, Colorado, mm-hmm. Utah. I just Wyoming. I mm-hmm. need to go to all of these places. Yeah, I've done everything else, like the entire perimeter. <laughs> of the united states and missed like the the heart of it you know yeah i think uh one of the major draws for me for montana is glacier national park i'm yeah. i'm planning to go there i've never been there i have been to montana before a long time ago but mm. i've never been to glacier and so that's definitely on my list of places to stop and 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 see yeah have you been to yellowstone I have. So when I was a little kid, I went to Yellowstone. But, you know, depending on how close I get, I'd love to stop back over there. Um, mm. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know my exact plans for Montana yet. But if I'm close, I'll definitely go to Yellowstone. Yeah. No. Have you watched that show at all? No, I haven't. I, like, I, I'm not much of a watcher. I mostly listen no. to things. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm more of a Podcasts. listener than a watcher. Because I like to move around. I don't sit still well. So, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, so watching things isn't really... Do you listen to a lot of podcasts? I do, yeah. What are you listening to right now? Uh, I've listened to probably like every climbing podcast okay. that exists. I yeah, I'm like almost running out of climbing podcasts. I'm like, guys, make them faster. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, I listen to I what, are, was, what are some of those podcasts? Let's do some uh, shout outs. Oh yeah, the Enormo Cast is a, okay. my, one of my favorites. Um, the Run Out. Um, that's also with uh, Chris Calouse and Andrew Bisher at. Um, and then there's Climbing Gold. That's Alex Honnold's. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, what else? The struggle. That's a good one. I'm, mm. I've just started that one, um, or just started. I'm like 50 podcasts, and you know, dang. I listen okay. at three x. I listen, you know, I listen to them like I listen to my meditations. Really? At three x. Three x. Yeah. That's a joke, but yeah. <laughs> no, I do listen to the podcast like pretty quick though. Um, Damn. Yeah, unless unless it's like someone that t- already talks really fast or something. Yeah, but, I don't know that I could do it. No, I think I've tried. I feel like I've done audiobooks or like tried audiobooks okay. fast, like 2X or something, but like. Not into I, it. I don't know. It's just, yeah. Huh. Maybe I need to give it a, give it some time. You like to listen at. Uh, just regular. Human speed. Actually, half speed. <laughs> <laughs> just, it takes a lot to process. Slow it down. <laughs> <laughs> no, just regular uh, speed is nice for me. I'm just. Okay. Fair yeah. enough. That's tight. I actually, I haven't really listened to, there was one climbing podcast that I, I listened to a little bit. I can't remember. It might've been the first one that you said. The Enormal cast was like the original. Um, yeah, it was I like, think it was that yeah, one. like for a while it was like the only game in town. And mm-hmm. uh, I mean, he's had like a lot of famous climbers on there. So that's like a really well-known one. Yeah. It's probably the one you listen to. Yeah. Would it be a dream of yours to be a pro climber? Uh, I mean... I think like I feel enough pressure with climbing just for myself <laughs> that it, yeah. w- it would be like, yeah. And not to mention the fact that I don't have the talent for that, but you don't uh, think so? no, definitely not. I mean, to be fair, we have never climbed together. So I actually we haven't, like, no. have no idea. Yeah. But I get the sense that you're I could, I could be projecting V0 in the gym. You don't know. <laughs> uh, 
I mean, I'm not, but yeah, I could be. Um, <laughs> what What are you projecting right now in the gym? Uh, in the I don't know. I mean, it like depends on the style. So for mm. me, like if it's slab, I can usually pretty much do it um because they anything? don't set they don't really set anything that hard on the slab um okay you're definitely a better climber than me because <laughs> 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 there's some slab i'm definitely not not able to uh, accomplish not able to yeah finish. yeah like at cliffs i yeah i mean if you're looking for a number like at cliffs probably like projecting like v6 v7 usually okay. um okay. yeah i mean it so depends on the style like if there's great heel hooks and like some sneaky technical beta then mm -hmm. uh you know I love it and, and yeah. it's good but like strength is my weakness I'd say in climbing mm -hmm. so if it requires like power or you know a whole lot of body tension that's definitely not something that I'm yeah. you know that great at so yeah I definitely compensate how with, so with power okay yeah yeah so I'm definitely less of a technical climber oh okay yeah more tend to be able to just like power things out mm, okay um but that being said, like, the, like the longer that I've been climbing, the more that I've been climbing, like starting to, like I did my first V6 Ooh. at the, when was it? I guess like December mm -hmm. was probably like my first V6. Nice. And I think that now that I'm at that level, it's mm -hmm. like requiring a certain level of like technicality. Mm -hmm. So that's definitely an area that I'm, that I'm working on. Okay. But I think the crutch that I was operating on for the longest time was just being able to like muscle something out, you know? Fair enough. Yeah. That's like the opposite style to me. I was like, yeah. I was like, how can I like find some sneaky, you know, <laughs> sneaky high heel and like yeah. not do the intended beta or whatever, you know? Yeah. Keep my feet on the entire time. Uh yeah. Do but. you prefer slab climbing? Um, I think it depends. I, I love slab climbing. Like a slab yeah. boulder, I will take that every day of the week, you know? Really? I love it. Yeah. Love it. But um I love hate slab. <laughs> you love hate it, yeah. But if it's yeah, I mean I would say if it's like run out on gear, I definitely would not prefer slab. Because, mm -hmm. you know, I'm gonna lose a lot of skin on That's the fear. On it if I fall. That is the fear. So. Whenever I'm slab climbing and it feels like I'm whenever I'm outdoors, it feels like it's a lot of slab. Like point doom, there's like that whole face that like the the face like the beach face of oh, the north face yeah is like basically all slab mm -hmm. and then when i was in j tree we were like at isla sky it was like a big slab climb and so i feel like i'm always climbing slab mm -hmm. um and every time i'm climbing slab i'm like this is terrible this is terrifying like i feel like i'm standing yeah. on nothing at all like the yeah. footholds are just it feels like it's crystals two millimeters yeah. you know <laughs> i like that i like that because you can you can really take your time or you have to take your time and you mm. can like select exactly which crystal you want to use and just be like <laughs> you're my crystal you're gonna keep me good uh you know yeah i mean that's the crazy thing though is like that crystal will keep you good yeah that you know tiny foothold is gonna keep you on the wall somehow the truth i also have crystals in my chalk bag but uh do you really i do yeah <laughs> what are those crystals for in the chalk bag um just like crystals that i find i oh, usually that's... just like keep them in the chalk bag <laughs> sometimes i'm like going in there i'm like oh i don't have any chalk today but at least i have this crystal <laughs> <laughs> like hopefully this hopefully this like keeps my sweaty hands on the on the whole that's hilarious so, yeah that's cool have you been to the post yet in pasadena i have yeah have, have. you done the speed climbing wall that they have there um, I haven't done it there. I have tried a speed wall before and I find it really hard because it's it's such a powerful route. Mm, I mean, even though it's yeah. not like super hard climb, it's it's a very powerful climb. Like, I really want to do yeah. it. I've never done, done it before. No. You haven't done it. You got to try it. Yeah. I they have one at Sunder One too. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how, do, like when you go at the, when you go to the post, uh -huh. if you want to do it, do you just have to tell somebody or like. It's an like, auto belay, right? Yeah. But it was like closed down when I went. Oh, I don't know. I'm. I mean, it was yeah. just open when you were there? Uh, I went right when it opened, so I don't think it was... Oh, okay. I don't think it was open yet. Yeah, yeah. they had just... Uh, like, they didn't have... They didn't even have free weights. Like, they, they hardly had anything when yeah. I went. It was, like, very beginning. Yeah. Um, and I haven't been back yet, so... Oh, it's super nice now. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I really like the post. Um, the the top propping there is sweet. Yeah. Like, their their walls are great. They have a lot, a lot of stuff. Is that where you normally go? Mm, no, I would say... Right now, I probably normally go to lab. Okay. Just because it's in proximity. It's like so close for yeah. me. For, but like, I also go to Cliffs yeah. a decent amount. That's where I usually see you. And also, Cliffs is the sauna. And I like, 
if yeah. if Lab had a sauna, you might never see me. Because <laughs> I, yeah. I feel like I would just I would be content. I'd be like, this is it. This is great. I feel you. Yeah. I uh, yeah. Lab is missing like the the moon board situation, like the, mm. the boards, the training boards, yeah. the sauna, the ropes. It's such a smaller thing, you know. Yeah. But. Yeah. If they had a sauna. If they had a sauna and even just like one rope, <laughs> just one, only just one, maybe like an outdoor, they could like add an extension, <laughs> just like an outdoor wall. That'd be crazy. Some gyms have the outdoor climbing, like the outdoor situation. You yeah. know I had a dream last night. I'm just realizing right now. I had a dream <laughs> about like a, an apartment building that was like a, development that was being built uh-huh. and around like the whole exterior of the building was a route like a rock wall just one long traverse yeah pretty much that's wild that's a great concept actually yeah I, this is a cool dream <laughs> what if you're going faster you'd be like oh let me just climb over you let me climb past you and you would have to climb over somebody that'd be hilarious yeah i've seen um some pretty wild uh walls in like other countries and also i think in new york there's or i'm trying to remember what i've seen i know that i've seen videos on instagram where there's like these insane walls that are part of like apartment buildings and they kind of like have this open air Hmm, component there's also that huge tower somewhere in europe it's like 300 meters tall and it's like a gigantic climb Oh, the uh, the one that Red Bull had set up, right? Yeah, I think it's yeah. That. I don't know where that is. I don't remember. I, I think it's on a on a dam, right? Or, well, there's that one, oh, but then, then there's, there's another the, one that's like a tower. I think I've seen that one. I don't remember where it is either. The yeah. dam one looks really cool. The too. dam one does look cool. Yeah. I'm curious about, and I know that we probably got to wrap things up pretty soon here. Yeah. Um, but I want to know more about this wall that that you and your dad built over COVID. Oh yeah, yeah. I um yeah, so I I had to go back home and I was like not exactly psyched about that cuz I was planning to be traveling. And um so my and the gyms were all closed. I mean, in Virginia like gyms were closed for like months, mm-hmm. I think, like maybe 6 months or something. I don't know how long. And then um when they did open up, it was like questionable whether you really wanted to go because we still didn't really know that much about COVID. Yeah. And so my dad was like, "Oh, well, we can, you know, we can build a little <laughs> a little wall in the backyard so i built like a 30 degree overhanging uh like eight by eight wall with like a, a two foot kickboard and mm. just like ordered some holds i painted a giant sunflower on it which i was pretty psyched about that's so sick yeah uh yeah it was fun and uh and i just like practiced setting and i learned that setting is really really hard and, and i really appreciate root setters now yeah um but yeah i just had fun like trying it and trying mm. to how long did it take to build the wall um hmm. it didn't actually take that long um we just built like framing and then kind of figured out how to put it up on the angle that i wanted it on maybe took like over the course of a couple of weekends we had it up mm-hmm. yeah that's sick yeah and the holds were good the holds were good yeah <laughs> good for training i'd say like yeah. there i mean it definitely wasn't the easiest setup but um but yeah it was good for keeping some amount of strength in my fingers yeah so. totally yeah i'm like where did you buy the holds yeah, so I ordered like them. Amazon it was actually like, really hard to find holds at that time because everyone yeah. was building home walls yeah. because all the gyms were kind of closed and and like everyone was kind of, you know, shaming people that went and climbed outside in small towns and stuff like that. So it was like basically Great. you just need to climb at home, you know. Oh my um, goodness. So it was really hard to find holds. I found them on like a random website. I can't even remember the name of it, but I could look it up and tell you. It's mm-hmm. yeah, it, I just like got a box, like an assortment box, and then I ordered like some special holds. I wanted like a moon. F- yeah. For uh, I got like a giant sloper that looks like a moon. And, yeah. Uh, I had like I actually am cool. like really interested in like it's the most niche thing ever, but like hold making. Oh yeah. I just think it's so cool. Like I've seen people who do like like granite or like actual rock oh yeah. Um holds mm-hmm. that you can order. I think I've also seen like wooden ones. And then I've s i have saw some video where somebody was like casting like these silicon holds. Yeah, you can make your own. It's really cool. Yeah. You can get like materials to make your own. Um and like carve out one of those kind of plant like i don't know plant 
foam things that you can yeah yeah, yeah 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 and then you you kind of shape it how you want it and then pour in the the mixture or whatever and it's like stuff you can apparently get the stuff pretty easily so i gotta try this to get into it yeah yeah just make some really weird holes <laughs> yeah you know like they have um what's his name jason keel he, he made the baby head holds for uh was wow. it for so, so ill? Maybe I'm not sure. I think it was so ill. But anyway, he, the baby head holds. So yeah, you can make some pretty weird <laughs> holds for sure. That's so funny. I'll just start experimenting and then take a box load to Cliffs to be like, hey, do you guys want to uh, <laughs> throw these up on a route? <laughs> you can start selling them. People always buy whenever they have those really? hold sales. People they people people buy them. So that would be sick. Yeah, you can start set up your little set up a little tent or something <laughs> or a little. Put your van out front. It <laughs> holds for sale. Oh my god! This that'll, one that'll be yeah. my next uh, side hustle. There you go. What are you gonna make it look like? How are you gonna shape it? I don't know. I I kind of want to do something that's just like more funny, or like more humorous than anything. Like I'm literally just looking at my bookshelf and I'm like, oh, do a wine bottle or do a book mm. or like a. I don't, I don't know a face <laughs> a face oh yeah custom holds send us a cast of your face and we'll make a climbing hold out of it he's so wild <laughs> it's like gouging someone in the eye like pinching their nose trying to trying to climb up it or something i feel like a face would be an interesting hold because like but, yeah. there are so many different contours <laughs> <laughs> their mouth it's like open it's the drug <laughs> it's like the finger pocket i don't know that's kind of fucked up <laughs> it's kind of weird <laughs> oh my god but well, any uh, as we're as we're wrapping it up, Katie, any last thoughts? Anything? Okay, actually, because I, I definitely want to bring you back when you come back from this trip. Oh yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah. So, what do you want to tell your your future <laughs> self? My future self. Um, hmm. Wow. Tell my future self. Um, don't worry if it doesn't go according to plan. Um, <laughs> and that. Uh, expect change and embrace the uncertainty and um yeah take it day by day i think that's what i would tell myself yeah yeah we'll right see on. we'll see how it, how it turns out but well i'm really excited to hear about yeah. your trip um definitely you know post tons of stuff on instagram yeah do you want people to like follow your journey are you wanting oh, sure. to put that out like yeah yeah i'll be posting on instagram plenty um yeah it's at katie underscore miracle whip so <laughs> yeah that's me my last yeah. name is mayo so Oh, amazing. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, Katie, thank you so much for coming on the show. Yeah. Thanks Excited for having me. Excited for, uh, for your journey. Best of luck. Um, and uh, I hope Canada treats you well. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for the tips on getting in. I appreciate <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Well, uh, we'll see you in a couple months. Sounds good. Thank you for listening to the Spring Street Podcast. If you'd like to support the show, sign up for the Patreon to receive exclusive behind-the-scenes content. And check out the sponsor links in the description.